There are three states in the Union who go out of their way to lay claim to Abraham Lincoln. Kentucky, because he was born there. Illinois, because he launched his legal and political career there. With Indiana thus standing as Lincoln's true home, guiding and molding him through his formative years. And it's in Indiana where Abraham Lincoln receives his most striking tribute at a new museum in Fort Wayne, showcasing Abraham Lincoln as the savior of the great experiment. And by that, we mean he saved self-government for you and I to enjoy today. And we think that that's why he is such a revered individual. And nowhere in Indiana is there a more lavish tribute to our most favorite sons than the new Lincoln Museum in downtown Fort Wayne. It opened last October at a cost of $6 million, detailing Lincoln's remarkable life from his humble frontier origins through his dogged guidance of our country through its most tumultuous and treacherous period, and to which he became a martyr to the cause, preserving the great experiment. And he felt that the Civil War was the greatest test of this experiment. Would it survive as a way of governing? And in fact, we did because of Lincoln's sheer determination that we would. And uh, that's what we try and teach the visitor. The Lincoln Museum is owned by Lincoln National Corporation and has its origins in 1928 in keeping with the financial service company's undying gratitude to Abe. Created as an insurance company in 1905, one of its founding fathers, Arthur Hall, operating in a time when insurance companies had the same low esteem as used buggy salesmen, sought to give the company a name that instantly smacked of honesty and integrity. So he wrote Lincoln's oldest and sole surviving son, Robert Todd Lincoln, asking permission to use his dad's revered name for their new company. Robert Todd Lincoln responded by saying, of course you can use his name, and he sent the Matthew Brady photo that you see when you look at your $5 bill. Well, the Lincoln National Life Insurance Company took off with Hall feeling a suitable memorial was justified for its namesake slash meal ticket and enlisted Lincoln scholar Lewis Warren to create a library and museum in Lincoln's honor in the company's office building. The museum was a pleasant, relatively modest affair, attracting 20,000 visitors a year. But a few years ago, Lincoln National, while seeking to streamline, debated whether to jettison the library and museum or go all out and do it up grand. They chose grand. The thing that they realized but they went through that study was that they had an incredibly valuable collection that was prized. And they decided if anyone was going to prize it, they, they were going to. And prize it they do in 11 galleries and all sorts of hands-on interactive exhibits to bring Abe into the 90s, where he can sit across from his desk and second-guess the president's day-to-day -day decisions or go through his mail or take to the computer to help his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, bring some needed luster to the White House with a $20,000 redecoration budget. She overspent her allowance by $6,700, a fact she tried to hide from the president. Of course, the media got wind of this, with poor Mary enduring much the same flack Hillary Clinton does today. There are four theaters to show brief films about our 16th president, the most enjoyable featuring film critic Gene Siskel and Lincoln biographer David Donald reviewing some of Hollywood's takes on Abraham Lincoln, with the discourse between Siskel and Donald much more civilized than that between Siskel and Ebert. And since Lincoln National cashed in handsomely on Abe Lincoln's name, it's only fitting to showcase others who have done so as their commitment to honesty and quality, including a California bail bondsman who assures us, Abe's my name, freedom's my game. And there's even a form to determine whether you have what it takes to be considered Lincoln-esque. That's quite a challenge for Lincoln, while far from Hollywood handsome, stands as one of our most photogenic citizens, as the museum amply demonstrates with its stunning collection of Lincoln photos and sculptures, showing why so many artists spent so many hours seeking to capture his character and nobility. The museum displays many prized personal effects of Lincoln, a pen knife he carried, a paperweight from his White House desk, his favorite shawl to ward off the cold but especially excited by the recent acquisition of the inkwell, documented to be the one into which was dipped the pen used to sign the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863, leading to the abolition of slavery. The library now has 18,000 books on all things Lincoln, augmented by thousands of articles and newspaper clippings on the most written about American historical figure, and all available to serious Lincoln scholars who call daily with inquiries, including those currently stalking the presidency, looking for industrial strength coattails. Who want to get right with Lincoln, and so they use his quotations and they call us to make sure that Lincoln really did say this. It's interesting such a lavish tribute to Abraham Lincoln would be here in Fort Wayne, for as far as we know, he only came through this town once, we think. We haven't been able to prove or disprove it, so we say local legend has it, that he stopped in Fort Wayne to change trains on his way out to the Cooper Union speech. That was a speech in late February in 1860 in New York City where Lincoln first made a deep impression on key Eastern Republicans to help propel him to the nomination and the presidency. 
He probably didn't want to stay long in Fort Wayne anyway, since it was considered an intense Democratic Party stronghold. But the city, through Lincoln National Corporation, has more than made up for any perceived lack of hospitality back then with a first-rate museum to Indiana's most cherished son. The Lincoln Museum on East Berry Street in downtown Fort Wayne is open every day but Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving. It's open from 10 to 5 Monday through Saturday, 1 to 5 on Sunday. Just 3 bucks for adults, $2 for kids and seniors. 